George Chickarella Moir is a teacher. He teaches politics at Drexel University. He's joining us now live from Philadelphia. George, let's start with the OAS. Uh, Famagro, uh, if this case against Venezuela moves forward, two-thirds of the 34 nations in the OAS General Assembly would need to vote to suspend Venezuela for this to take effect. What do you think the odds are of that actually happening? I think the odds are close to zero, and it's actually pretty scandalous that Amagro has, has decided to move forward with this. Uh, the OAS Democratic Charter is very clear that a constitutional uh, rupture has to have occurred. There has to be some violation of constitutional order for this even to be invoked. Um, and, you know, and it's clearly a political gesture. The reality is that the OAS is a pro-U.S. institution. It has been why it's been played in other institutions like UNASUR and other South American and Caribbean institutions um, that it considers to be further outside of the ground of the United States. And you can compare this uh, to Almagro's very, very soft line on what many con consider to have been an institutional coup in Brazil just a couple of weeks ago, where he didn't seem to be bothered at all by, the, by those uh, events. Uh, earlier uh, this month, we, we had a chance to talk to you. You, you were talking about uh, perhaps months of crisis as the opposition of Maduro fight it out. How does this play into all of that? Well, it points very clearly toward uh, one of the severe weaknesses of the Venezuelan opposition, which is that they actually don't have any policies domestically. They don't have a great deal of leverage um, to be, you know, to be using. And so they make this mistake of appealing to what is seen as foreign intervention. Now, having the OAS intervene, some are asking for humanitarian aid. These are not things that are going to make this opposition any more popular than it is. Um, it's, you know, it looks as though um, they can't handle things on their own and so are appealing to the outside. What they should have been doing this entire time is actually collecting signatures for this recall referendum. Um, there was a serious error, I think, in the, in the intro piece that you guys ran. The, the executive has not blocked this referendum process. It's playing out. Um, it's not going as quickly as the opposition would like it to, in part because they themselves stalled the process earlier. Um, and so now they're complaining because they're worried that if they don't have this referendum by December, they will not actually take power if, if it goes through. George, can I get your thoughts on these secret meetings in the Dominican Republic to try and mediate things? Uh, once word got out about the meetings, both sides pretty much had each other's throats trying to carve out their own narratives on what exactly happened. Is there any way to bridge this gap, uh, especially when you consider how many uh, average civilians in Venezuela are being impacted by this impasse? Sure. I mean, these were these meetings are UNASUR facilitated meetings. In other words, these are the kind of meetings that the Venezuelan government is going to be more willing to participate in. Um, but the question is one of you know of negotiating an outcome is you know is a difficult one to, to see happening. On the the reality is things are getting very bad in Venezuela. Um, on the one hand, the government is attempting certain economic measures, but not really uh, doing what is necessary to stabilize the exchange rate and to undermine the black market. The opposition is really grandstanding and not offering many alternatives. Um, and so you've got the country caught between these two forces who have never really agreed um, and certainly won't be able to agree on a common solution to this situation. And so the next few months will indeed be very complicated and very tense. Again, if a referendum is passed before December, the opposition will be able to uh, run an election to take over power. If it only occurs in January, February, March, which is more likely, that means that the Venezuelan vice president simply takes over to, to continue the, the remaining two years of the mandate. George, thanks so much for joining us from Philadelphia with your analysis. Appreciate it. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.